Welcome to Firepower 360 Military, where we uncover the real numbers behind global defense decisions. Today, we break down the newly revealed evaluation that shows the F-35 was the decisive winner over Sweden's gripe and E in Canada's fighter competition, and why the scoring wasn't even close. In 2021, Canada launched the Future Fighter Capability Project, the second major attempt to replace its aging CF-18 fleet. The first procurement had collapsed under political pressure and cost disputes. So this time, Canada promised something different. Independent scoring, transparent evaluation, competitive tender. But as the competition progressed, the field narrowed fast. Dassault withdrew, saying security requirements made RAF Faley incompatible with Five Eyes operations. Airbus left, claiming the process had been built with the F-35 in mind. Boeing's Super Hornet was later disqualified. And suddenly, only two 5th generation contenders remained. United States Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning II, Sweden Saab Gripen E. For years, many believed Gripen could win on affordability, logistics, and local industrial cooperation. But when internal scoring was leaked through Radio Canada, the truth hit defense analysts like a shockwave. The F-35 won by a massive margin. Not a little, not slightly, but overwhelmingly, almost five times higher in mission performance. The final score was almost unbelievable. Green Square F-35, 57.1 slash 60 points, 95%. Red Square Gripe and E, 19.8 slash 60 points, 33%. Both aircraft passed basic mandatory requirements. But once operational capability, long-term upgrade potential, and combat survivability were rated, the separation became a chasm. The aircraft chosen to protect one of the world's largest Arctic borders could not just fly, it needed to dominate. Former Canadian Air Force Commander LT Gen Yvonne Blondin put it bluntly, if our pilots face Russian or Chinese fighters in the Arctic, you put them in an F-35, it scores 95%. You put them in a Gripen, it's 33%. Numbers don't lie. This wasn't preference. This was performance. But even with the data exposed, the story and political battle is far from over. Despite being outscored in every capability category, Saab isn't backing down. The company continues to lobby with a different strategy, not on combat performance, but on industrial advantage. Saab's pitch to Ottawa, cheaper operational cost per flight hour, rapid forward maintenance and dispersed basing, potential local assembly in Canada via Bombardier, long-term domestic industry participation, Gripen E is a lighter, cheaper aircraft built around flexibility. It can operate from highways. It can turn around fast with minimal support crew. It offers sovereignty and manufacturing potential that the F-35, a highly centralized U.S. controlled platform, simply does not. For a country like Canada, with vast territory but limited fighter bases, that argument has power. And right now, politics matter. Prime Minister Mark Carney has ordered a review of the F-35 purchase amid ongoing trade friction with Washington. Canada is under pressure to balance combat capability against economic benefit and industrial independence. This is where the debate becomes strategic. Green Square F-35 equals higher performance, stronger deterrence, global integration. Red Square Gripen equals cheaper to operate, local jobs, national production path. Which should Canada prioritize? A fighter that dominates high-end conflict, or one that strengthens Canadian industry? And now the hardest truth. With the scoring chart public, if Ottawa pulls back from the F-35, it will face questions it may struggle to answer. The capability gap is too large to ignore, and the world now knows it. The Department of National Defense has already completed its reassessment of the F-35 program, but the report remains sealed. The moment it's released, one of two headlines is inevitable. Canada stays with the F-35 
accepting the numbers and the long-term combat advantage. Or, Canada pivots toward industrial strategy, risking capability for domestic return. The data says the F-35 is the clear winner. But data doesn't make purchases, politics do. And the world is waiting to see which Canada chooses.